Greetings solo wheelers. So as I'm riding my solo wheel, people always stop me on the street and they ask, well, how far does it go on a full charge and how fast does it go? Let's get some definitive results. Today, I'm going to run some errands with my solo wheel, which I suggest that everyone does to, you know, help save the environment and use less gas. I have my Voltaic backpack here, solar power backpack, ready to go. Wonderful backpack, by the way. So I'm going to take my backpack and I am going to go run some errands on the solo wheel. I'm going to drop off some dry cleaning, cash in some checks. First of all, uh, today is, I believe, Wednesday, June 4th. Weather is 70 degrees outside. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to have some music to listen to as we ride. Now, just to let you know how much weight I'm carrying on me, because of course, your body weight determines how far you also go on the solo wheel, because it has a maximum weight of 220 pounds. So on the scale, I tip in at approximately, looks like I am, let's see, about 165 pounds right now with my gear and my shoes. So, to track how far we're going to go today, I'm going to use this app for smartphones it's called Endomoto Pro. It's great. You can set it. Well, there, as you as you can see, obviously there's no solo wheel setting, but my GPS is on. It's going to measure how long I've been riding, the distance speed and average speed and I have it set I do believe to make sure that in my settings menu it's in miles good now, workout settings I have it set so it's on auto pause meaning that every time I come to a stoplight or I'm not moving it doesn't uh, measure the time that I'm going so, there we go Turn my MP3 player on. All right, time to run some errands. Let's go. First stop, dry cleaning. Fire up the old wheel that is fully charged. I just unplugged it. Now we turn on our app. Here we go. Okay, first stop dry cleaning. Okay, fire up the app here, pause it. We've gone 0.75 miles in four minutes and 40 seconds, averaging 9.7 miles. So now I'm gonna drop off some dry cleaning and we're gonna go on to our next okay, stop. Okay, I just dropped off my dry cleaning. Next stop, I have to go to the bank. So time to start the app again, start up the app. And here we go. All right, we are now rolling up to my bank. Just to prove to you that a solo wheel is more than a toy, you can actually run errands on it.
time to stop the app. We've gone two mile, 2.41 miles. Now to cash in some checks. All right, I just finished running my errands from the bank and uh, I'm done for the day, but I'm sure you want to know how far this thing goes. So I'm going to start the app back up. Time to ride this thing till the battery drains out. All right, I'm heading towards uh, five and a quarter miles right now. I've been riding for about 31 minutes. And at this point, the bottoms of my feet are really starting to hurt. One of the reasons for that is the solo wheel does not have any shock absorbers, so I'm feeling all the bumps through my feet. And even though I'm wearing a pair of comfortable athletic shoes, my feet are still starting to get numb. Uh-oh, I'm starting to get the quakes. I'm starting to get the quakes. It's flashing red. And as you can see, it's kind of shaking in my feet here. I'm gonna keep riding it until this thing dies. And when it dies, it's gonna throw me forward. Keep going, come on, keep it up, keep it up, come on. Ah. There you go. And that is as far as it goes. 5.74 miles, about 34 minutes of riding, even though there might be I'd say, let's say two or three minutes of that spent running errands. Average 10 miles an hour. And uh, this was my route. Let me pull it back up for you one more time. So there you have it. 5.7 mile, 5.7 mile, four mile range. Averaging 10 miles an hour, hitting top speeds around 11 and a half miles. And this is real world applications, meaning that little bumps affect your speed. I'm now back home after carrying the solo wheel after it died on me. Fortunately, I wasn't that far away, maybe an eighth of a mile. As you can see, once it's completely drained, the light flashes red and white back and forth. And one thing I forgot to do is weigh the wheel itself. So in case you're wondering how much you have to carry when the thing does die, it is 23 pounds. Those of you that have wondered how long it takes for a solo wheel to charge from completely drained, as you can see, it is drained. Completely dead. I'm going to plug it in. Right now it's 3.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Michigan. And that last check, it's going to take you roughly about two and a half hours of fully charge. And we'll come back when it's done. All right, the local time is about 5.28. We plugged in the solar wheel at 3.03. So it takes about two hours and 25 minutes to fully recharge. All right, earlier today, I took the solar wheel out to run some errands. And afterwards, I rode it till the battery completely drained just to give you an idea of its range. But I was running errands, so every time I came to a stop sign or I hit a red light, that would affect my average speed. So right now, let's try to figure out A, the top speed, and B, just how fast I can average per mile on a track surface. So uh, without much ado, here we go. top speed. I can set the feel of the solo wheel start to tug me backwards if I lean forward anymore. And I'm sitting steady at about 11.7 miles an hour. I wish you could see the screen a little bit better, but I have a 3M privacy screen. So, I'm going to stick to lane 4, which is right in the middle. And don't worry, uh, when you watch this video, I am going to give you some edits so you don't have to sit here and watch me 
bored out of your mind watching me go for the next 10 minutes or so. Finish line straight away. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right. I believe that's it.